you were in a relationship and you really loved this person and they were they were terrified of you. They were so afraid they were going to do something wrong that they they couldn't even talk to you. Hey, I'm in middle of working on this background thing that I'm doing today and I thought this might be a fun way to I don't know, maybe talk about some stuff instead of my normal here, let me post this video and blah, blah, blah. So let's, let's just paint together or maybe watch me while I paint and make a mess, very possibly make a mess, who knows. So I keep thinking about this idea, it's not an idea, let me rephrase that. I keep thinking about the scripture that talks about work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. Pretty sure that's what it says. I'll have to I'll double check on that, but I'm pretty sure it's work out your own salvation. I know that part's right. So what does that, what does that mean? And why does it say that? Well, I can't, I can't help but think that we're obviously created in God's image. We already know that. And what does that mean? Because the relationship, and I'm just going to go out on this limb here. The relationship that you have with your children or your spouse, well, it's not the same relationship that you have with your friends. And it's also not the same, oh, I like that color. It's also not the same relationship. You have a different relationship with your kids, your children, than you do your spouse. You have a different relationship with your parents than you do your children. And that's, to me, that's where I keep going back to this work out your salvation because we're created in God's image and God is not linear, meaning he is multifaceted, faceted, faceted, however, however you say that word. And his relationship with me is different than his relationship with you, is different than his relationship with your Sunday school teacher or your friends, or it, it just, it really, for some reason, it brings it home to me that the relationship with him is specific to each one of us. He doesn't have the same relationship because he doesn't create us to be, we're not cyborg, okay? If you remember, Cyborg, um, um, that TV show, and then it was a movie and Star Trek, Star Trek, it was Star Trek. So we're not, we're not cyborg. We're actually living, breathing individual people. And because of that, when it talks about working out your own salvation, I keep coming back to this idea that working out your own salvation is... Okay, if we change that wording, and I know, you know, we're, we're loosely going to change the wording to working out your relationship, recognizing the relationship that you have with God, recognizing who he is and what he does and how he does and how he talks to me is different than how he talks to you and how he talks to, I don't know, Priscilla Shire, just, just pick somebody. How he talks to us is very individual. I don't know if this is going to work, but we're going to try it. We're watercolor and a stencil. Let, let's see what happens. Why not? Maybe that's what this is about. Maybe this is, let's see what happens with our relationship with God. Let's see what this is about. Let's see what it looks like. Let's see how he talks to me and how he talks to you. And maybe that's what this is about, but it, I keep, I keep coming back to this idea that it's personal. I mean, it's like literally personal. Yeah, well, sort of, kind of, maybe kind of a mess. But hey, learn something, right? So what if, what if because it's personal, it doesn't look the same with every single person, which I've already kind of mentioned. And at the same time, what if, what if it's so personal that we open ourselves up and say, God, what, 
What does our relationship look like? How do you talk to me? How do I talk to you? How do I recognize you? You know, and it, scripture says that the sheep know the voice. You know, God, God says, Christ says, my sheep know my voice. Well, that is collective, but it's also singular because each sheep hears his voice, but it hears it according to the relationship that it has with the shepherd. And then, you know, I have to think about that whole fear and trembling thing. And I go back to, to the verses that talk about the wildflowers and how God takes care of the wildflowers. They're flowers. They're, they're just wildflowers. They're literally wildflowers are blooming right now everywhere. And yet they're wildflowers and they're not going to be here forever. They're not going to last. We know that they're only for a season, only for a short amount of time. We know that they're here today. They're gone to tomorrow. And yet he takes care of them. That doesn't tell me that we are in this terrifying fear and trembling idea of who God is. It tells me that he's personal, that he's real, that he wants a personal relationship with us that is real, that's not based on the works and all the you need to do this and you need to do that and it looks this way and it looks that way. That's not what it tells me when it's saying, oh, he's personal. He takes care of the flowers, wildflowers that just, they don't last any time, just literally for a season. And I'm kind of excited because I'm going to, I'm going to plant wildflowers this week, I hope. So doesn't that say maybe, maybe this idea of fear and trembling is Maybe it's a, a little not quite exactly. What if fear and trembling? Okay, let me put it this way. In the summer, there are lots of outdoor concerts. Um, lots of concerts. And what if those concerts are the times that we get excited? Well, we know they're the times we get excited. So you have a concert you're going to. You can't wait to get there. You love the artist. You've been following them forever. It's amazing. You can't wait to see this artist in concert. They're just the best ever. And then all of a sudden you're there, but you're so excited you're trembling and you're jumping up and down and you're excited. And it's not a fear excitement. It's an actual excitement. Now, how cool is that? It's an actual excitement. It's Oh my gosh, I can't believe I'm here. I can't believe I get to see this. I can't believe I get to experience that. What, what if that's what fear and trembling is in scripture? It's the excitement of knowing you get to hang out with the king of the universe. You get to hang out with the creator, the person who made you, who made everything else in the entire world, including the wildflowers. And, and it's not like, okay, well, I get to go see this concert and this this band or this person that I love and I can't wait and I'm excited and I'm, I'm shaking because I can't wait to get there and I'm jumping up and down when I'm there. And on top of that, this concert, this band, this person you can't wait to see that you're all excited about actually invites you back to their bus because they want to know you personally. Now, how stinking exciting would that be? How exciting would it be to know that someone that is that famous, that is all of that, wants to get to know you personally? Wouldn't that be kind of crazy? Wouldn't that be seriously out there? And yet that's exactly, that's exactly what Christ does. That's exactly who God is. So maybe, maybe this idea of fear and trembling is not terrified, afraid that, you know, you're going to do something wrong and you're going to get in trouble and 
and I'm terrified because he's the king and he's going to get me and he's out to get me. And maybe it's not that. Maybe it is. Wow. He's the king of the universe. He created everything and he wants to hang out with me. What if that's what it is? What if it's much more that direction than it is, okay, I'm terrified. This is just, oh, what if he gets me? What if he gets mad at me? What if I do something wrong? Maybe that's not it. Maybe it's, maybe it is the idea of the concert and the fun. Wouldn't that be much more in line with the character that scripture describes God as having instead of this, I'm going to get you and you're in trouble. That's, could we hang out? Can we, can we be together? Can, can we talk and can we spend some time? Maybe we could, maybe we could have, I don't know. How about some lemonade? I don't know. I'm just I'm just throwing it out there because it just seems like we get so caught up in the in the terrified and the scary and the yikes. I can't figure out what color I want here. I'm going to use this one. We get so caught up in all of that that maybe we miss this relationship that scripture says we can have, this personal ongoing relationship that God wants to have with us, that he wants to be with us and hang out with us and guide us and give us some help because, you know, I can definitely use some help all the time, actually. And I think that's where I'm going because I see this happening and I see these ideas and I see these thoughts that pop into my head. And I saw one this morning when I was on Facebook for a few minutes and someone had posted well, maybe you're going through a hard time. And it, it was one of those celebrity meme thing, whatever you want to call them. Someone had posted, maybe you're going through a hard time because um, you're, God is moving you. Maybe you're going through a hard time and not where you want to be because God is moving you to where he needs you to be. And that just hit me in the weirdest way because I started thinking, wait a minute. God doesn't need anything. He doesn't need me to be anywhere. All he wants is a relationship. It's not about where I am and him needing me to be in a specific place. It's about having a relationship with him. Doesn't that seem a little strange to you? I mean, that was that was what went through my head. You know, what can I say? Uh, I kind of like the way those colors are playing back and forth. And we need some, some green. We want green. Blah, blah, blah. How about some yellow? We'll try yellow instead. Okay, that kind of works. I like that. I just, I went back to that idea that maybe, maybe this isn't what I thought. Maybe this isn't what we've been taught or what has been suggested to us. Maybe this is, maybe this is too much fear and trembling and not enough love and safety and grace and happiness and just hanging out with the Lord. Wouldn't that be crazy? Wouldn't that be crazy and cool and kind of fun? I don't know. Can you can you relate to that at all? Does it make any sense at all that maybe we've maybe we've taken an idea that that says we're one thing and we think we're one thing and we think we're one direction and we end up being totally off kilter and not really seeing the reality of what it is. We see something that's just not, not what God intended. I don't know. Is it possible? Is that possible to, to just think about and see something that God didn't actually intend for us to experience? Or, I mean, how, how scary would it be if, you were in a relationship and you really loved this person and they were they were terrified of you they were so afraid they were going to do something wrong that they they couldn't even talk to you and when they tried to talk to you they were so scared they were going to say the wrong thing or do the wrong thing that they couldn't have a true relationship with you i mean that would be like all kinds of i think that would be all kinds of sad and difficult and I know it wouldn't make me very happy to try and 
be in that kind of relationship with someone. I don't like the way that's looking at all. We're going to go to this one. Yeah, so I don't know. What What do you think? Am I, am I wigging here? Am I, am I losing it? Very possibly. I don't want a relationship with God where I have to be terrified of him. I don't want a relationship with God where I'm constantly afraid that he's going to zap me for something. It doesn't sound like fun. That doesn't sound like what scripture has actually said he is and how he behaves. I don't know. That's that's not the portions of scripture that, that I read about. If you... Have you read something else? Do you see something? What's your take on this? I would love to know if you could let me know in the comments. That would be great. I'm always ready for a little more thought, conviction, con, not conviction. What's that word? Conversation. Conversation. That's the word I'm going for. More conversation. Okay. Um. Yeah, that's, that's where I'm at today. So I'm going to put this in speed mode and finish it up. So yeah, I'm, I'm looking forward to wildflowers and a wild relationship with God. Not a, not a scary, not a do something wrong, freak out. So, okay, I'm going to finish this. I'll put it in speed mode and I'll talk to you later.